Coming up on Joni Table Talk, are you surrendering your worries and concerns to God? If you conquer something on your own, the tendency is to think mm -hmm. you did it yourself. The wise person says, maybe I could conquer this on my own, but I need God's help. Mm -hmm. I want God to work on my behalf in every single thing yeah. that I do. So what could be holding you back? Instead of thinking what God can do and how he's going to overcome all this, we become focused on the problem, not on the solution. The conversation starts now. Real friends, loving, laughing, and learning together. Sharing stories, one life at a time. So grab a seat. Welcome to Joni Table Talk. What promise have you yet to take hold of? And could something be standing in the way of your destiny? Today, with the help of our special guest, we'll look at some of the giants that are potentially occupying your promised land and how to deal with them. Joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly Dean. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me on today. I'm here with one of our faves. One of our John favorite Paul Jackson. Yes, yes. yes. It's always yes. a good program when he's on. And also another one of my faves. Yes, yes. yes. Right here. Rebecca Lamb, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Rebecca Lamb is so formal. It's, well, my, my precious younger daughter, I'm always glad when she's on the table and you're in Bible school. And yes, ma'am. I know you're learning so much at King's University, but it's a blessing to sit around the table, too, isn't Especially it? Especially with John Paul Jackson at the table. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And Cindy Murdoch, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. And, I, you know, I want to say to people that are watching right now, hit the record button because you're going to want to okay. share this show yes, with yes. a lot of people. Yes. So Yes. John great Paul time. Jackson, just give people a little tease. Uh, as to why they want to keep watching and welcome by the way. Thank you. I love I love being here and, and <laughs> the, here's the here's the tease. The tease is this. There could be th 10 things standing in your way of reaching your destiny and if you can conquer those 10 things, everything God created you to do, you can achieve. All right. Yeah. Well, as the Israelites stood at the threshold of the promised land, they were confronted with the giants that stood between them and their destiny. And according to John Paul, we each must face these same giants before we can actually step into all that God has called us to. So for those uh, watching today and they feel like there's something standing in, in the way of their mm -hmm. destiny, what would you say to that? And what do you feel like the Lord showed you? Well, a couple of things. One, in... in um, Genesis, the Lord talks to Abraham and says, that after 400 years, your people are going, your descendants are going to come back to the land, and they're going to have to conquer 10 different nations. And these nations that they're going to have to conquer, some are mightier than them. Then Moses, right before they were getting ready to enter the promised land, said, now, I'm just reminding you that you're going to enter into a land, and there's, there's seven nations that are stronger than you. You're going to conquer other nations, but there's seven that are stronger than you, and you're going to have to rely on God in order to conquer them. Mm. Now, I understand that names mean something. So, the, the, for example, the name Jesus, Yeshua, literally in Hebrew means salvation. Mm. So whenever you see in the Old Testament, you see the word Yeshua, or you see the word salvation, it literally is the Hebrew word Yeshua. So when Jesus came, he came for the salvation of, of mankind. Mm -hmm. So names really mean something. So it, just like there were giants or there were nations that stood in the way of Israel reaching their promise and the fruitful land that God had called them to, there I realized that the names of these, I think by divine direction of the Holy Spirit, I realized that there were the names of the countries that are the nationalities that Israel had to conquer, those names could mean something also. So I began to look up and do word studies on the names of the countries that they were going to have to conquer. Mm -hmm. And I came out to some amazing, amazing conclusions. The three that we could conquer on our own, mm -hmm. and then the seven that we have to have God to conquer. But even in conquering them on our own, there's a, there's a test involved in that because if you conquer something on your own, the tendency is to think mm. you did it yourself. Right. The wise person says, right. I'm, I, maybe I could conquer this on my own, but I need God's help. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want God to help me in everything, mm -hmm. not just yes. the seven that I can't do, because I don't want to become self-sufficient mm -hmm. in what is here. I want God to work on my behalf mm -hmm. in every single thing yeah. that I do. So well, and in John 14, he reminds us by saying, apart from me, 
you can do nothing. You can do nothing. So that I think the Lord is wanting us to know, mm-hmm. even when you think you can, you can't. Right. And, and for sure, you won't be able to do it as good as I can do it. So that's what well, that's what we want to take a look at today. And one of the nations, for example, uh, that that we can conquer on our own supposedly is this, meaning that we should probably with wisdom should not try, but we could do it to become self-sufficient, which is not good, would be the Kenites. And Kenites means fabricator, which means lies and false accusations. So there are going to be lies and false accusations sent against you. And the design of that is to get you to become self-defensive. Right. So you defend yourself versus letting God defend you. And you become pro uh, you become so focused on your own issues mm-hmm. that you forget it's to look true. at other people's right. other people's it's issues. Right. You forget the whole the bigger picture mm-hmm. altogether. Yeah, so the whole issue of the Kenites is to get you to forget the big picture mm-hmm. and to look at the lies and get folks, well, they're lying about me. They're telling terrible yeah. things about me. Instead of thinking what God can do and how he's going to overcome mm-hmm. all this, we mm-hmm. become focused on the problem, not on the solution. Wow. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times in ministry, there are opportunities where as you elevate in the kingdom and you're able to reach more and more people, you also become a target. You do. And so there's constant criticism, people who judge your heart and you have, you can't be like King Saul and worry about what, right. you know, people are saying, you just have to be concerned about pleasing mm-hmm. God, but still right. your flesh at times wants to defend yourself mm-hmm. and you can get caught up in that bubble oh, it's a swirl. and it will totally divert you yes. from what God is wanting to do. And it's, it's, I can tell you, it was yeah. really difficult yeah. for me to not want to go defend or, mm-hmm. well, what about, you know, and it's just, sometimes you just have to let them swarm around you, stay, mm-hmm. keep your focus and let God be your defender. That's difficult to do. It is. You can become so, so focused on the problem that you actually mm-hmm. forget to expand the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You're, mm-hmm. You, you become so absorbed in everything that's yeah. happened to mm-hmm. you, you don't help people or, with their problems. Or you're so exhausted from defending yourself exactly. that you don't have the energy to do yeah. what he's asked you to do for his kingdom. Yeah. Exactly. And then you think more people, there's more accusation than there is people that are receiving. Yeah, like yeah. Paranoid. So you feel defeated and... Yeah, yeah like you're spinning you your tires. I'm, I've just done nothing but fight off issues. Mm-hmm. Instead of advancing what God wants to do, I'm just like spinning my tires in this whole mm-hmm. this whole arena. And, and that's exactly what the enemy wants you to yeah. do. Because in spinning your tires or it, not addressing any of these that we're going to be talking about, you can literally um, not reach the person for which God created you. It can be delayed or it can be detoured because you spend more time on the problem than you do on the answer. When, when we invoke God into a matter and we allow God to defend us, for example, in this, in this particular issue with the, with the Kenite type of attack that comes against us, then we, we allow God to do it quickly. We may, we may address it like, well, it can happen now if I defend myself. And it seems like if God defends me, it takes a long time. But here's what happens when God defends you. You get to raise the dead. If I defend me, nobody believes me because people who don't like me will, will say it's not true. And people who do like me knew it anyway. And so I don't, nothing changes if I defend myself. But if God defends us, then he defends us with additional power and authority. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. So what is the second one that we can do on ourselves? But well, we don't want to do this. Yeah, we don't want God, to, but, 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 but we have strength. God gives each of us strength to do certain things, but we want him to be involved in, in what he's called us to do. So Kenizzite is the next is the next country that Israel was going to have to overcome. The Hebrew children were. And the Kenizzite means possessiveness, to be possessive. And it, it's kind of like covetousness, trying to look more spiritual than you are, trying to look as spiritual as somebody else. Uh, we, we want to... Um, we want to, to portray a facade that makes other people think we're really something better than what we, yeah. what we really are. And here's what happens when you do that. You actually don't walk into what you're created to do because you're trying to look like everybody else. Yeah. And anytime you try to look like everybody else, you'll never achieve what God designed you to become. You were designed Uniquely. by God to become yes. something. Yeah. Uniquely designed. Yeah, uniquely designed. Exactly. Yeah. And so you, I know you and I were just listening to a message the other day. I was thinking about that. And one of the things that we were listening to is, um, I know all of us in ministry have encountered this. When, when you see someone and you say, how's it going? And then they start telling you all their accomplishments. And, <laughs> oh. and, there, and, there, and there's not a lot of humility. You know, do you remember that? Yes, you can be prideful or you almost feel like you have to prove yourself to people. Yeah, yeah. Which is what he's talking about. And that's part of the result of this. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's, 
walking in humility mm -hmm. and giving God the glory. Right. But when we start to put it on and think it has something to do with us, especially mm -hmm. in ministry, that's really dangerous. It is. Mm -hmm. When you start comparing yourself to somebody else and trying to live up to their reputation and not live up to what God's mm -hmm. called you to do. You'll never reach, and I love what you said, Cindy, you'll never reach what you were uniquely designed to do by trying to copy somebody else and mm -hmm. look as spiritual mm -hmm. as somebody else. Yeah. So wow. you have to know who you are and you have to rest in the affirmation of God the Father. Amen. So, so the third giant. Cadmonites. Oh. The Cadmonite spirit. This is ancient means, Cadmonite means ancient ways, and it represents a religious spirit. So if you ever talk about the spirit of religion or religious spirit, yeah. this is the Cadmonite spirit. And it basically means tradition is treated as if it were equal to scripture. Oh, and the old that. wine is good enough. We've always done it this way. Why can't we keep doing it this way? The old wine is good enough. And that scripture in the Bible that says your tradition mm. has made the word of God no effect. No effect, exactly. Wow. So what markets will sometimes get up and say, there, there, there is something that is more powerful than the word of God. And people are like, oh, uh -huh. and then he, he quotes that scripture and it's mm -hmm. your tradition. Yes. It's your man-made rules. It's your religious spirit. Mm -hmm. It will make the word of God of no effect. Of no effect. It does. And then you impose what you believe on somebody else. And it's not in the Bible. There's absolutely in the Bible you want to do that. But that you suddenly start to say things like, well, you have to do it this way or it won't, or it won't work. You have yeah. to do it my way or it's not going to be really good. And that's mm -hmm. where you, it's like you're doing it on your own again. It's your way. Mm -hmm. It's this. Right. And that's mm -hmm. not self-sufficient. You're making it about you all well, over again. Well, then it becomes mm -hmm. like all the other religions of the world. Right. That it's something you, you attain, you try to attain your salvation by works and not by the sacrifice. Yeah, the not by what Jesus, Jesus did, but what I can do. You know, yeah. I know, Becca, you've talked about even in your testimony that you had to come to the point, do you realize it wasn't what you could do? You know, you, okay, people at home, you cannot fix yourself. <laughs> so I think one of the main messages of today is partner with God, let Him fight your battles for you, trust in Him, and let Him work in you. He's working in you. Yeah. And he wants Good to word. do that in everybody. Everybody. The seven other giants that we well, have now, to have Now we're going to come to the ones that we can't conquer Ooh. without God's help. Yeah, yeah. Now, all of them we can't really conquer the best way without God's yeah, help. But, yeah. but he's right now saying, because Moses told the children of Israel, there are seven that are mightier than you, stronger than you, greater than you, and God's going to require you to conquer these. And so we're going to get ready for the really difficult ones. And here's the first one. It's called the Hittite. I might, mm -hmm. Maybe you, some people might call it the Hittite spirit, whether it is a spirit it or not, it certainly does this. It produces terror and it it represents the fear of failure. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when we have a spirit of the fear of failure is that we uh, spiritual paralysis takes place and we become afraid to do anything because mm -hmm. we don't think we're spiritually enough to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. So we volunteer, but then we back away. And then we or we never volunteer because there's no way that God would use me to be able to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. and, and if I try to do it, it won't be any good anyway. I'll, get, I'll throw a party. Nobody will come. Yeah. I'll do a Bible study. Nobody will show yeah. up. Fear suddenly grips us and paralysis is what takes mm. is So the fear is at the bottom of that. Fear, terror yeah. is at the bottom yeah. of that. And so we've got to partner with God, like you said, mm -hmm. Becca, mm -hmm. in order to overcome that. Yeah, it, that's why perfect love casts out all fear. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. issue of God's perfect love comes in and removes the fear from our lives. And so through him, I can do all things who, through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Joyce Morrow, I love what she always said for years, do it afraid. Yeah, see, we all have a destiny that God has called a purpose, a purpose for which we were created. And God put us here to achieve that purpose. And the only way we're going to achieve that purpose is, is by allowing him to conquer that which is trying to conquer us. Yeah. That's the great mm -hmm. thing about God. He's always stronger than our enemy. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's move on to the next one. I think we have time for one more before okay. we take a break. Pezzerite spirit it means squatter. And this, this issue of squatter means apathy. We don't do anything about it. It's something, things have always been this way. We can't, we can't change anything. Why even try? Because we can't make anything, we can't make a difference in anything that's going on in our lives. So why try? Mm, That's a squatter yeah. spirit. And it takes, and here's what happens. When a squatter stays on your property long enough, the property becomes the squatters. Mm. It's called squatter's rights. The property becomes the squatters and not, and not yours. For example,
exempt. Did you know here in Texas, if somebody lives on your land for seven years and you do not ask them to move, they own the land they live on. We've been, oh. you, yeah, we've been experiencing You no that. longer <laughs> own the land. Think yeah. about that. In, in the spiritual context, it's kind of like demon spirits. Mm -hmm. They don't have any authority to be on God's property, but many times we open a door or window, they come in and squat, mm -hmm. and, we and then we let them stay yeah. instead yes. of, mm. you know, casting them out with the right. blood of Jesus and right. and they become squatters in our life and and de destroy us. Yes, yeah, it is the blood of Jesus that overcomes every one of these nations. Mm -hmm. It is that faith in him the blood that overcomes and if we apply the blood of Jesus to everything that's going on in our lives casting our faith upon him, he'll this it'll take care of all this, but when we think we have to do it, we will shrink back because mm, yeah. the giants are too big. Mm. Well, you don't want to go anywhere because we've got more with John Paul Jackson when we come back. Stay right there. Well, is there a giant standing in the way of your promise? Today, John Paul Jackson is showing us the giants the Israelites had to face to enter the promised land and how we also must face these same giants to reach our destiny. We covered five of those. Mm -hmm. Let's go to number six now. Number six would be the Raphaim or uh, the Hivites. Raphaim. And it literally means giant. Raphaim literally means giant. And it causes you to want to flee and run away from something you were doing. Mm. And so what you want to do then with a giant is you want to give up, you want to surrender, you think you're trying to do something, well, maybe God didn't tell me to do it after all, or this is much harder than I thought it was. Mm. Those are the, that's a kind of a giant spirit that tries to overcome you and tries to keep mm. you from what God's called you to do. What I've found in my life is God is always stretching me and I always feel like it's a giant when God stretches mm -hmm. me. Wow. Yeah. He yeah. asked me to do sure. something that I feel like I'm incapable of doing, but he's asking me Hello, to do it anyway. That's the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's consistent. It's so true. I mean, you do, you do feel that way. And yet I think about our early beginnings. There were so many times where honestly I felt like we just need to give up this <laughs> dream. I'm not sure if it really came from the Lord uh -huh. and skedaddle out of Christian television because this is too difficult. But but Marcus, you know, we stood together, mm -hmm. and I can say his perseverance is he never turned turned around and ran. And there's something that happens to us when we turn our back on the enemy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we run. What is that? We run. It's called cowardice, and it, it sets the stage for us to run from everything else we face. We suddenly, we have turned from advancing the kingdom to shrinking the kingdom when we mm -hmm. turn our back on the enemy and run. And so it sets the stage for us to continue to, to turn away from anything else that we feel like we can't handle. And our back isn't protected. Our back isn't mm -hmm. protected, yeah, mm -hmm. to get shot in the back, yeah. easier yeah. than ever. So easier than ever to shoot us in the back because mm -hmm. we have a full armor, but it's all on the front. Mm -hmm. So you have to face it head on. Were there times in your life and ministry where you wanted to run? I mean, haven't we all felt that way? Oh, I don't yeah. think I've ever felt that way more than a, a thousand times I can remember. <laughs> and, you know, and, I, and I appreciate you all saying that yeah. because there's a lot of people, I believe, and have heard that say, why can't I hear like maybe Marcus and Joni did or John Paul and why do I have self-doubt when they just, man, they just knew and they just went yeah. forth. I think it's encouraging to people yeah. to know you're going to have those yeah. thoughts of self-doubt. Yeah, you'll never, you'll never reach your destiny until you conquer that which stands in front of you. And the reality is this, God intentionally brings these nations or these giants before our face to make us address them because we're going to find out later that it actually makes us stronger than ever. Kayla, Joshua and, Joshua and <laughs> Caleb put it like this, the, they are our bread. That's what a strange statement. They are our bread. Let's yeah. go up right now because they are our bread, wow. meaning this is what we're going to take and will make us stronger. We ingest this, we deal with this moment, and we become stronger than ever. We will not get weaker. We will get stronger. You know, I was talking to my um, nephew yesterday who's, who's 19, and he was telling me, he said, you know, Aunt Joni, when I was younger, he said I had some real social awkwardness and sometimes didn't have a lot of friends. He said, but at that point in my life was when I really had to press into the Lord. And he said, so they, there were difficult times for me, but it was, it, was, it was in those moments that 
God really showed up and he really was my best friend. Mm -hmm. And he said, so today I'm, I'm stronger in my relationship with God. And even though that was hard to go through as a young person, today I'm stronger because of it, because I have that relationship. So adversity and difficult situations of life and the valley experience does make you stronger if you will keep standing yes, and does. continue to walk through as difficult as it, as it is. Because when you get through those situations, you'll look back and when the next situation giant happens comes. and the next giant, giant comes and you're able to rehearse Mm. what God did in the past. Right. I know well, you've done that. Well, I did, and that's what David did. He said, look, I've killed the bear, yes. I've killed the lion. Who is this giant to stand in front yeah. of me? Yeah, like, give me my courage for the future. And the soldiers there are going, have you lost your mind, David? You <laughs> can't even wear armor. King Saul's yeah. armor. You're just a little shrimp, and you think you can go out. So tell us about the Amorites. The Amorite spirit. Now, this, this is something that seems subtle, but it is very, very destructive to the, to the way that we think. The mm. Amorite spirit means, Amorite means sayer. Sayer. Mm. Sayer is meant to create inferiority and self-doubt in your mind. And it basically does this. Whenever you walk into a room, you feel like people are talking about you. Whenever you're someplace, people are always, I'm, I'm the topic of conversation. When you're really not, but you do feel like you are. And so mm -hmm. you're thinking, everybody's thinking, well, I must Paranoid. have a terrible shirt on or, or <laughs> yeah. I must have yeah. spot on my clothes or something because <laughs> yeah. you're sure everybody is talking about you. And it, it causes you to be incredibly withdrawn and to, to think more about what others say about you than what God has called you mm -hmm. to yeah. do. Isn't so that you're always, inferiority? I mean, isn't that what inferiority is? It is. It's, it's that you are made inferior and you cannot do what other people are gifted. And it's a form of saying, I, I'm like, I, I, I'm uh, not made as good as other people. And God made a mistake when he made me. Wow. So inferiority yeah. says, I'm, God made me less than other mm -hmm. people. Instead of mm. me having a purpose, I'm really, I'm, I don't have a purpose. I'm not here for anything other than I guess I just exist until yeah. God takes me home. And that's huge out there with people. Right. It's that's huge out there. A lot of there. people are battling I, I talk to, to not only older people, but I talk to young people, mm -hmm. you know, 15, 18, 20 years of age, and I see this happening. Their conversation is filled with, I don't think I'm going to live to be very old. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. what this spirit does. Mm -hmm. This spirit says, I'm not going to live to be very old. And my life is done. I don't really have a or, purpose. Or uh, this happened to my mother or this happened to my mm -hmm. father. And mm -hmm. so, so therefore, I think it's going to probably happen to me. Yeah. And so it's just a very dull outlook yeah. on your purpose Ooh. and God's purpose for your life. They really don't grasp that they have one. And, and it doesn't seem like it's like a big deal, but it's really, mm. really a big deal in our lives. Absolutely. Wow. All right, the next one is... Canaanite. Canaanites. The Canaanite spirit means zealousness or premature promotion or premature mm. opportunity. It causes us to want to do something and not wait on the timing of God, mm. but we, we feel like, okay, God's told me to do it. Instead of thinking, well, God's told me I'm going to do it, we extrapolate God told me to do it. And with that, we then launch out into the deep when mm. God hasn't told us to launch out mm. yet. There's mm -hmm. a time for everything under heaven, Ecclesiastes yeah. says. Yeah. And we, we fail to recognize the timing of it. And the result of that is, is this, that when we launch out prematurely, we're out of timing of God's plan. Things don't work out the way we thought they would. We get discouraged and we quit, mm -hmm. which then causes us to say, I'll never do anything yeah. else Again, so we become wow. passive, and we're already beat, we're already beaten. So we don't achieve what God's called us to do because we quit. We were mm. out of timing with it. Mm. That the timing of God yes. is so important. And you and I have talked about how many pe gifted people we've seen in ministry, but yet they were a novice. Mm -hmm. And they were promoted too quickly. And what happens? What does the Bible say will happen? An inheritance gained hastily will not be blessed on the end, Proverbs 20, 21 says. And yeah. you, we were talking about this we as well. Just talking about this, how important the process is. And if you cut a shortcut through the process, you'll end up not ready mm -hmm. and not succeeding. Right, because the Lord knows what you need to fulfill your destiny right. and yes. purpose. So don't fight that process. Yes. And yes, you're going to have to wait maybe this long and then go through this door and wait mm -hmm. a little bit longer and go through this door. But you follow Holy Spirit. You allow Him to show mm -hmm. you and open those doors. When you start trying to force doors open exactly. or you start trying to take your plan, mm -hmm. and we've all done it. We've yeah. all tried to help God out. But yes. it's always... 
a detriment to us, isn't right. it? Right, it never works the way, way it was intended to work when we're premature in what God's called us to do. We got time for one more. To the well, we've got Gergeshites. Gergeshites, here's this is a very common one. A Gergeshite means stranger. It means that you feel out of place everywhere you go. You may be attending a church for 10 years and you go, I don't feel at home here. I've, I'm out of place here. And it, when it does that, it keeps you from growing roots and it keeps you from maturing mm. in what God has oh, called wow. you to do. Okay, we do have time for the last one quickly. Jebusite means downtrodden. It creates a feeling of anxiety and depression and a victim mentality where we blame others for our lack Ooh. of success. Ooh. Oh, wow. we talked about that too, didn't we, Becca? <laughs> yes, we did. No, that it goes on a lot. Or, or this is also good too, or condemnation for not doing enough. Right. Because a lot of people feel like, yes. you know, they feel that heaviness, well, I should be doing more, I should be doing more, I'm just not, why, 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 you know, and then they beat themselves mm -hmm. up. Like guilt. Exactly, guilt. so you feel exactly. condemned because you didn't do as much as you yeah. think you should have done. And wow. this is the one that causes those of you that are listening today, you have that stress, that anxiety, that mm. depression, and we have how many people hooked on prescription meds so true. Because, because of, of anxiety. This. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anxiety. And Proverbs says that anxiety in the heart of a man causes mm -hmm. depression. Yes. It mm -hmm. begins with anxiety, trying to do too much or the feeling like I'm not doing enough, enough. which presses oh. you to do more. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. People want this teaching. Do you have this available? We do. We have this We have this available on our, on our website. And your website is? Streamsministries.com. And the, the series is called? Uh, Inheriting Your Destiny. Inheriting Your Destiny. Okay, there it is for you. We're out of time. John Paul Jackson is always a blessing. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. For more resources and information, as he said, you can visit him online at streamsministries.com. If there's a need in your life, we want you to call the number that's on your screen. We have prayer partners standing by, ready to pray with you. We want to do it. It's our honor, our privilege. You don't have to give your name, any information, but let us pray with you today. As always, you can join the conversation online after the program by leaving us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. We love to hear from you. We read your comments. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for responding. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.